live from Lenox, Massachusetts, it's the TBS Presents The Classic Couples Game Show. And Master of Ceremonies tonight for our show is Pastor Gary LeMaster. We want to welcome tonight to the Classic Couples Game Show. I had to turn around and read the sign so I'd make sure I was on the right show. We want to uh, get started tonight because we have so many tremendous questions and, and intimate revealing questions that we want to get started. And we want to introduce our first couple, couple number one. This is Pastor uh, Bob, yes, Pastor Bob and Eleanor Horn. Let's have a hand for couple number one. Uh, how long, have you, how long have you folks been married? You, you don't know. <laughs> 14 years. 14 years. Well, maybe we should have called this the ancient couples <laughs> show tonight. <clears throat> no offense, but uh, we want to introduce couple number two, Mr. Ed and Linda Canino. <laughs> how long have you folks been married? Eight years. Eight years. You never know. <laughs> And now, classic couple number three, and this is Pastor Scott and Edith Robinson. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it wasn't Edith, I'm sorry, it's Diane Robinson, excuse me for that. How long have you folks been married? Three and a half years. Three and a half years. And you, you come from where? We hail from Oklahoma. Oklahoma. I'm sorry we couldn't have a flag here tonight, but we just didn't have room on stage. All right. Couple number four, Pastor David and Mrs. David uh, Huff. Let's have a hand for Pastor David and Patty Huff. How long have you folks been married? Eight years. Eight long years. I can tell they've been hard. I can tell they've been hard, hard years. Well, we're looking forward to a tremendous time. The winner of the show tonight wins a free meal, a dinner for one and a half at Gateway's Restaurant. <laughs> We're going to go to a commercial break. We'll be right back and ask those revealing questions of the husbands. And now a word from the nursery. Hi, Trixie. Are you new here? I've never seen you before. Uh, how old are you? What you got in your mouth? Like you got. Want some of my banana? I'll give you a banana if you give me a um, piece of your candy. Okay? 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 Know what my mommy said? She said that I heard her talking to my auntie. She said that, um, she said that, um, Nursery opens at 8 o'clock, you know, in the morning, so we can come at 8 o'clock. But it closes at 5, so we can go home and eat dinner. Aren't you happy? <laughs> Trixie, aren't you happy? Um, and you know what else? If um, you bring one kid, it costs 40 cents. But if you bring another one, it only is 10 cents. So you can bring a sixth your next time and only pay 10 cents. Right? <laughs> Trixie, you don't talk to me. You're just a dummy. Well, thank you for that word from the nursery. And now back to our master of ceremonies, Pastor Lamaster. Well, we're here with our, our classic cus couples, husbands tonight. And we're going to be asking them some questions. Husbands, would just answer your question as briefly as possible. No sermonettes or long dissertations, just as briefly as possible so that we can get your answer on the card. And our cards aren't very big. Uh, Pastor Horn, for 10, well, we're not going to do points yet. Um, I want to ask you a very intimate question. Uh, where did you take your wife on your first date? I took her to a basketball game. A basketball game. Yes, I was very sports-minded in those days. Very romantic. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, <laughs> Pastor Horn. That's tremendous. <laughs> Mr. Canino, we'd like to ask you the same question. Where did you take your wife on your first date? 
the uh, mall in Washington, D.C. The mall in Washington, D.C. I can tell that we have a couple of romantics here tonight. I... I'm not sure I want to ask this question to Pastor Robinson. <laughs> Would you tell us, please, where you took your wife on your first date? We went to Suzelle's right across the New Hampshire border from South Berwick and had a beautiful dinner together. Very romantic. Thank you. Suzelle's. Were you arrested for inter interstate transportation? No. <laughs> <laughs> stolen property? <laughs> and Pastor Huff, finally, question number one, where did you take your wife on your first date? Pancake house. <laughs> Pancake house. <laughs> well, I hope that it hasn't been too long for your wives to remember those answers. Question number two. Pastor Horn, when you were dating, what was the most humorous uh, situation that you ever got into with your wife that you'd like to tell us? <laughs> <laughs> when I was dating. <clears throat> Let's see. The most humorous situation I think it was all a scream. <laughs> Let's see, what was the most humorous? Well, we could accept that answer. <laughs> okay. It was all a scream. Hmm. You must have had very interesting dates at those basketball games, <laughs> being fans and just screaming. Well, we'll go on. Uh, Ed, what was the most humorous thing that happened to you while you were dating Linda? <laughs> eight years ago, you know. <laughs> uh, strange as it may sound, the time that we were selling wind chimes together in Georgetown in Washington, D.C. The time you were selling wind chimes together in Georgetown. You have that, judges? In Washington, D.C. Well, uh, Pastor Robinson, when you were dating Edith, what was the most humorous thing that happened to you? I think the most humorous thing, to my recollection, that I wish to bring out in public was <laughs> the fact that I had taken her out for a date and then avoided contact with her for a while, for some reason or another, and went up to have a date with Sylvia Benner, and she was there when I knocked on the door for <laughs> Sylvia. <laughs> So while you were dating, uh, situation. you decided to date somebody else and your wife was there yes. in the same room. That was Very good. humorous. I'm sure that that was more humorous now than it was then. Yes. To look back upon. Um, Pastor Huff, what was the most humorous thing that happened to you when you were dating? Patty. Uh, a letter from her father when he found out we were going to get married. A letter that you received from your father? From her father. Her father. Okay. <laughs> Must have been an interesting letter. <laughs> Question number three, Pastor Horn. There had to, most couples have a, when they're dating and they haven't really made a final commitment yet, there's usually someone or something that creates a tremendous rival uh, in the relationship. And what we'd like to know from you tonight is who or what was the biggest rival that you had, that your wife, that you had with your wife when you were dating? Well, perhaps the biggest rival that I had was a very strange prayer partner. <laughs> <laughs> I used to go up into this tower. Your wife and your prayer and uh, her prayer partner? No, no, no. She was a rival in that at the same time I was dating my wife. The prayer tower was the I rival. went with a young lady to a prayer tower. <laughs> and I prayed with her, I think. <laughs> mm. <laughs> the rest I'd rather not talk about. <laughs> but who would your wife say was your bigger, biggest rival? A name? Yeah, who would your wife, who or what would your wife say was, was your biggest rival? A prayer partner. Prayer partner, okay. Do you have a name? First name? Dorothea. <laughs> Dorothea. Good old Dorothea. <laughs> you don't forget a name like that. <laughs> Ed? When you were dating Linda, did you, was there a rival, a thing or a person? There was absolutely no rival. No rival? No rival. Okay, well, that's acceptable. Pastor Robinson, I know there was a rival in your, <laughs> in your relationship. Would you care to tell us who it was? 
I honestly, to tell you the truth, have so many, I'm just going to answer them now. <laughs> no, I can't. You could say many. could say many, that's true. Or too many to count. I think I'll just say no rivals. No rivals, okay. You're playing it safe, you <laughs> chickens. Pastor Huff, who was your biggest rival dating your wife? I'd have to say no rival. No rival. No rival. I don't believe you guys, but we'll go ahead and go on. <laughs> I, think, I think you're afraid to say because of what it might do to your relationship. Now, uh, we're going to have another commercial break. We'll be right back in a moment to hear what the wives have to say about these questions we just asked their husbands. And now a message of special events. for that special events commercial and now back to Pastor Le Master. <laughs> <laughs> who, uh, who, is that who is that mystery voice out there? Uh, well, we're back live now and we have the wives here with their husbands and we're going to be asking them to tell us what answer they, that they think their husbands gave us to these questions. So are you ready, wives? <laughs> You're not ready? Well, too bad. Couple number one, Eleanor, we asked your husband where he took you on your first date. Would you please tell us for 10 points where he took you on your first date? Uh, we were in college and uh, uh, we went to a basketball game. You went I to a basketball I game. I don't remember what the score of the game was. That's the one, would you lift your answer please? You went to a basketball game. That's tremendous. <laughs> Linda, uh, where did Ed take you on your first date for 10 points? We were in Washington, D.C. He took me down to the mall. He took you to the mall in Washington, D.C. That's right. <laughs> you, I, I guess that the longer you're married, the better it is. <laughs> Mrs. Robinson, where did your husband take you on your first date? To Suzelle's in Rochester. To Suzelle's in Rochester for 10 points. <laughs> well, couple number four, Pastor and Patty Huff. Patty, tell us where your husband took you on your first date. To the pancake house. To the pancake house. <laughs> well, so far we have, a, we have a tie going into the question number two. Uh, the next question is in, also involves your uh, uh, dating life, and we ask your husbands what the most humorous situation was that you ever got into when you were dating. <laughs> Eleanor, would you please tell us for 10 points? <laughs> well, the uh, one I remember the most was, um, I don't know whether you're going to ask this later or not, but when he first kissed me, he floated off the steps. <laughs> <laughs> he 
<laughs> you must have some kiss. <laughs> Did you get any practice on uh, your dummy? No, I didn't have her. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Well, Pastor Horn, what did you say? I it said was all it was a all a scream. <laughs> <laughs> well, sorry, that wasn't quite the same thing. Oh, well. No points for that answer. Linda, what was the most humorous situation that you ever got into with your husband when you were dating? <laughs> well, back then we weren't saved, you know, so we never laughed. <laughs> I would say I would say it's funny where we met, which was as, at a yoga ashram, and Ed was teaching yoga. <laughs> yeah, Ed, what did you say when we sold wind chimes together in Washington D.C.? It wasn't quite close enough for the judges to give you points. Uh, Mrs. Robinson, what was the most humorous thing that ever happened to you when you were dating your husband? Well, we, like usual, used to sit in the parking lot in South Berwick. <laughs> uh, we're, we were sitting in the car, and I had on a V-neck red dress, and he was chewing gum. <laughs> let's my, let's, not, let's my, not get risque in any my, of our answers here. <laughs> my window was rolled down, and I don't know why he chose to throw it out my window, but he missed, and it went down my dress. <laughs> I still remember that. I'm sorry. He said that he went, he went to, he avoided you. Diane, do you remember that incident? No. You don't remember the incident? I probably wouldn't have married him if I did. <laughs> <laughs> well, now, Patty, what was the most humorous thing that happened to you and David? Um, uh, David's family came down to meet me. We were on Nantucket Island, and, you know, just the way it would be when you're just meeting a family, and we were all sort of reserved and trying to be very polite, and we were walking down the street, and we got into the car and we all noticed this very terrible smell. <laughs> and we had all walked on dog do. Hold it up, hold it up. I, I asked you, yes, a letter that you received from her father, <laughs> your father. You remember that? <laughs> well, that's good. <laughs> Question number three, wives. Uh, when you were still dating, when I, we asked your husband when he was still dating you, was there a rival that he had to put up with when he was dating you? Was there a person or a thing that was a rival when he was dating you to him? Ellie? person or a thing? Well, as I mentioned, we only met at a basketball game. And <laughs> he went there because another girl had stood him up. <laughs> Any names? Uh, Dorothea. Aha! <laughs> well, we'll accept that answer. He, he, he told us about a, he, according to his story, which I'm not sure I believe, he used to go up into the prayer tower and pray with Dorothea. <laughs> But you got the person right, so we'll give you the 10 <laughs> points for that. <laughs> Linda, who was that driver? competition for me, you mean. That's what you mean. Competition, yes. Okay. Well, I won't go into the details, but I could just give a name. Yes. Carolyn. <laughs> Ted said? That? No one. Oh. <laughs> well, not in his heart, but just the situation. I understand. <laughs> Diane, what's your answer? I think there were a whole bunch. But <laughs> <laughs> Let's see, there was Sylvia, there was Martha, there was. Come on. Uh, <laughs> I could incriminate a lot of people in this question. Let's see, I'm just. Is there anyone? There were a lot of them. What was your answer, Pastor Robinson? No rivals. Patty, did David have any rivals? Um. <laughs> <laughs> any names? Uh, Diana. Diana. What was your answer, Pastor Huff? No rivals. 
I think that the husbands were trying to protect themselves on that question. <laughs> right now, we're going to go to a commercial break, and we'll be back asking the questions to the wives. Passover Master with the Classic Couples Show. Well, we have the wives here with us now. We're going to be asking them questions for 10 points. We have three questions that are worth 10 points, ladies. And then our final question is the bonus question worth 25 points. And that usually is the one that determines the winner. And uh, so we're going to go right to the questions now. Ellie, uh, what we want to ask you is something a little bit about your husband's uh, habits, living habits. And we want to know what the last thing he does before he leaves the house in the morning? What is the last thing he does? I comb his hair. <laughs> you comb his hair. Do you also tie his tie? No. You don't tie his shoes? No. <laughs> Linda, what's the last thing that Ed does before he leaves the house in the morning? Kisses me goodbye. He kisses you goodbye, isn't that sweet? <laughs> Diane, what's the last thing that your husband does before he leaves the house in the morning? Usually kisses me goodbye. He kisses you goodbye also. Well, I'm really pleased. <laughs> Patty, what does your husband do before he leaves the house in the morning? I don't really know because I leave the house before him. <laughs> <laughs> well, can you, can you give us a little more? To, can you guess? He'd probably kiss me goodbye. He kisses you goodbye? Well, he probably would if I was there. Okay. <laughs> well, we'll accept that answer, judges. Thank you. Ladies, question number two. Uh, we want to ask you now, when you were dating, who was your biggest rival? Ellie? A fellow named Peter. My husband got very upset when I... He, we weren't even going together, and uh, one day he found me sitting on Peter's lap, and... He told me later, after we were married, that it upset him terribly. <laughs> so Peter would be a, a rival. Peter. <laughs> well, that's good. <laughs> Linda, when you were dating, who was your biggest rival? There were none. There were none. Here we go again. <laughs> your wives are going to try to pull the same thing, aren't you? <clears throat> Diane, who was your biggest rival? None. There were none. None. Okay. I don't believe you, ladies, but we'll <laughs> accept those answers. Patty, who was your biggest rival? I'm Mac. Mac? M-A-K? Yes. <laughs> or M-A-C? No, M-A-C. M-A-C. Mac, would you, do you care to elaborate on... No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> now we're going to get very personal with the ladies. Um, when your husband proposed to you ladies, we want to know, uh, were they standing? Were they sitting? Or were they kneeling? <laughs> Ellie? When Pastor Horn proposed to you, was he standing, sitting, was he standing, sitting, or kneeling? Well, we were both out in the woods. Oh. And, <laughs> he, and we were both standing. You were both standing? Yeah, and it was raining. And just as he was we about... We just want to know what his position was. We really don't care. No, go ahead. Just as he was about to propose, a boy on a, on a bicycle rode by and said, Woo! <laughs> So, that, that so he, he was standing. <laughs> he was Thank you. Standing. <laughs> Linda, was Ed standing, sitting, or kneeling? I, I think the time we discussed marriage was uh, we were sitting in a van. He said, well, I guess we'll get married. And I said, yeah, I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> we were both so, sitting. So Ed was sitting. Diane, I'm afraid to ask. We were in a car, so obviously we had to be sitting. Scott yeah. was sitting. Your husband yeah, was sitting. We were in the car sitting. Thank you. Patty? <laughs> My husband didn't propose to me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Well, then, how did this all come about? <laughs> well... You, did you discuss it? No. <laughs> we, we really didn't. Can you give but, us an answer? <laughs> <laughs> when we received his revelation, no. I think that you could say we were standing. You were standing. <laughs> you sure? <laughs> standing for Patty and Pastor Huff. Now, ladies, for our fourth and final question. This is a bonus question worth 25 points, so think carefully about this answer, all right? If you had to describe your first year of marriage, oh, <laughs> would you describe it as one of the three categories? The cross, seated above in heavenly places, or wandering in the wilderness with the children of Israel? <laughs> Ellie, well, uh, how would you describe No doubt about it. Seated together in heavenly places. <laughs> <laughs> well, the Linda? 14th year is the same. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's good to know. What's the difference between the cross and wandering? I don't understand the difference. They both sound bad. <laughs> well, that is up to you to interpret. <laughs> Was it the cross? Seated, to heaven, seated together in heaven, heavenly places, <laughs> are wandering in the wilderness with the children of Israel. Well, I, we weren't saved, so I guess we weren't with the children of Israel. But we were wandering, but it was definitely not a good experience, so I would say... The cross? The cross. <laughs> okay. That's probably a more typical answer than people would realize. Diane, how would you describe your first year of marriage to us? Well... During the year, there's a bit of all three worked in there, but I'd say seated in heavenly places. Seated in heavenly places. Okay. Patty? So would I. Seated in heavenly places. Thank you, ladies. We're going to take a commercial break, and then we'll be right back to see what the husbands have to say about their wife's answers. And now, brought to you by Family Services Incorporated, our weekly serial, Response to Truth. Today our family saga, we find Mr. and Mrs. Smith engaged in a typical home discussion. Charlie, see anything in there you might have forgotten today? I can't find the milk in the refrigerator. Suppose you forgot it. I called you today I at the office. You the couldn't milk. even come. Emily, I forgot the milk. You forgot the milk last week. You always seem to be forgetting something. You're calling something. me five times a day and asking me for either milk I don't call or you five times a day or either. something in diapers yesterday. I can't help it if I forget Now look, Charlie. Look at Artie Johnson. He brings things home. Artie to Johnson? Family. What about Artie Johnson? At least he has his family. Artie the right Johnson. priority. Hey, listen about Artie Johnson. He's a turkey anyway. I can't even believe that you're talking to me this way. Come I should have just listened to my mother and not even have married you. Okay, I was just trying to make a point, okay. Emily. Oh, a point? You could have been a little more creative than that. A point ripped my heart out. Listen, listen. Don't be so stubborn. You're as stubborn as a mule. Yes. I am not you are. stubborn. If there's one thing yes, I'm not, you are. stubborn. Excuse me. Excuse me, Mr. and Mrs. Smith. Yes? Did you know that right now both of you can go to the cross, reckon yourselves dead, and find total oneness through Christ? We can? We can? Yes, in fact, you'll discover that the resources of God's love is more than able to satisfy your need. It is. It is. You see, Mr. and Mrs. Smith, your union is an eternal one. You love each other unconditionally, without demands, and without equivocation. We, we do. do. Oh, Charlie! Pa, yeah, you just sit right down here, and I'll go get you a glass of your oh, favorite yeah. orange juice. We don't Thank have that milk you know, tonight, dear. Uh, <laughs> Family Services Incorporated thanks you for being a part of this viewing audience. Tune in next week as the reality of ascended resurrection life invades yet another home on Response to Truth. <laughs> and now back to Pastor Gary Master and our couples. Well, we're back once again. We're going to be asking the husbands now the answers the the question the answers that their wives gave to the gave to the questions that we asked <laughs> right. i got it out 
<laughs> Husbands, we ask your wives what you did, what the last thing you did before you left in the house in the morning. Left the house in the morning. <laughs> Pastor Horn, what is the last thing that you do before you leave the house in the morning? The last thing I do? The last thing you do. Turn off the TV set. <laughs> Ellie, what did you say? She combs your hair? That's true. That's true. I, I got broken fingers. <laughs> and that affects how, how she combs your hair? Yes. That's why you can't comb your hair. That's it, yes. Broken fingers. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> she would probably, well, anyway. Uh, Ed, what, what is the last thing that you do before you leave in the house in the morning? Leave the house in the morning. I wash the dishes. No. <laughs> I say goodbye to everyone. You say goodbye to everyone. All right. How do you say goodbye Linda? To well, Come I, on, no I, coaxing now, Linda. <laughs> That's his answer. Explain how he says goodbye. No, 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 no. <laughs> he says no, no. Please show the answer. <laughs> she kisses him. He kisses her goodbye. Sorry. No. Come on, he kissed right in the mic. <laughs> but you, cor you coerced him into that answer. <laughs> well, ask the judges. Appeal to the judges. <laughs> judges? Court of judges? Mercy. He's not the judge. Glenn, you're the judge. Audience, what do you say? <laughs> <laughs> now, we've got an official ruling from the producer over here. No. <laughs> Pastor Robinson, <laughs> Pastor Robinson, tell us the last thing that you do before you leave the house in the morning. I take her in my hands, <laughs> and I look at her, and I kiss her, and I kiss her, and I kiss her. <laughs> Diane, what was your answer? Uh, he kisses you uh, goodbye. Yes. <laughs> 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 Is, uh, I wanted to ask one question. Is that, is that why you're always late to class? <laughs> <laughs> and by the way, do you have those crazy shoes on no, from Oklahoma no, no, tonight? No, no. Thank you. <laughs> uh, Pastor Huff, what is the last thing that you do before you leave the house in the morning? Turn off Captain Kangaroo. No. <laughs> <laughs> Someone in the audience relates to that answer. <laughs> brush my hair. You brush your hair. Patty said... <laughs> he, he probably, probably would, would kiss me goodbye if I was there. <laughs> <laughs> she leaves when Captain Kangaroo comes on. <laughs> Husbands, we ask your wives... Um, who their biggest rival was. And we, we, we want to know who or what was their biggest rival when you were dating. Pastor Horn? A rival to you. A rival to me, you're talking about. Who her biggest rival was. Oh, the name of that rat. <laughs> <laughs> what is the after, name after 14 of that rat? years, you have not forgiven him. Eight, what have after 14 years, I've finally forgotten him. <laughs> what? What's his name? Bob. Bob. What? Bob? Uh, no, Bob? Peter. Peter! Peter! <laughs> Ellie said, Ellie's told us of the time that you, you uh, walked in on her and Peter and she was sitting on Peter's lap. Would you forget that, please? <laughs> She was the one that told us. <laughs> I that thought it's nice to say he wasn't a good man. <laughs> I thought his name may have been Woody. No, at the time she was the dummy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Ed, what was your biggest rival? That word wasn't in my vocabulary. <laughs> rival? I had no rival. Okay. None. Ten points for Ed and Linda Canino. <laughs> Pastor Robinson, who was your biggest rival when you were dating Diane? Gosh. There were so many of them. <laughs> Let me think. <laughs> 
Uh, I'm going to say none. None. And Diane's answer was none. All right. Ten points for the Robinsons. <laughs> Pastor Huff, who was your biggest rival when you were dating Patty? He wasn't exactly big. He was about three feet high, <laughs> three feet wide, no teeth, and bald. His name was Mac. What did you say, Patty? <laughs> Mac. <laughs> I thought he was a uh, little, the, the way Patty told it, he was tall, dark, and handsome. That's right. <laughs> oh, oh. I, I, I have one that I always tell on my wife, too, but I won't bring it up tonight because it's embarrassing. Uh, we ask your wives to describe, gentlemen, your first year of marriage. A solemn time, a happy time, a blissful time. And we ask them to... Uh, describe it in in one of three ways. Could it best be described as a cross? You forgot a question. What? You forgot a question. Oh yes, forgive me. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot a question. <laughs> Would you like to see my notes? I forgot a question. I bet they've never done that on the newlywed game. <laughs> never done Husbands for ten points. I want to know. When you proposed to your wife, were you standing, were you sitting, or were you kneeling? Pastor Horn. I was standing and trembling. <laughs> standing. Ten points for the horn. Ed, were you standing, sitting, or kneeling? I was on the floor. I was either <laughs> yeah. sitting or kneeling. On the floor. You were kneeling? It was on the floor. It, I think I was sitting We on only the... gave, we only gave. You notice that we only allowed three options. <laughs> Standing, sitting, or kneeling. Yeah, right. I was sitting on the floor. You were sitting on the floor, and Linda said, you are sitting. Ten points for the Caninos. Actually, uh, Linda said that you were sitting in the van, but we'll accept sitting. I guess we'll get married. <laughs> I was a real romantic back then. <laughs> Pastor Robinson, were you standing, sitting, or kneeling? Just afterwards, a little of all three, but I'll say sitting. Sitting. Diane said you were sitting. sitting. Ten points for the Robinson. That's good. Couple number four, Pastor Huff, were you standing, sitting, or kneeling? Sleeping. <laughs> Notice I only gave three options. <laughs> standing. And, and, standing. And Patty said you were standing. Ten points for the Huffs. Now, gentlemen, this is our big 25-point bonus question. <laughs> and I'm going to ask you to, that, that your wife would describe the first year of your marriage and did they would she describe it as the cross would she destri describe it as seating above <laughs> seated above in heavenly places or wandering in the wilderness with the children of Israel pastor horn that's a hard decision for 25 <laughs> points <laughs> seated above in heavenly places <laughs> okay Okay. No, you do it. I'm going to, okay. It's, it's we, between the cross and wandering in the wilderness. <laughs> now, being that we weren't Christians, I would choose wandering in the wilderness. And Linda said, the cross. Because we weren't with the children of Israel. We'll take this up later. <laughs> By the way, we wanted to remind all of you that we do have counseling services available. <laughs> <laughs> and you can dial 637-1520 and ask for Pastor Robinson. <laughs> <laughs> and he'll be, be available to help you at a, at a low rate of $50 an hour. That's right. Pastor Robinson, your first year of marriage was? The cross seated above in heavenly places or wandering in the wilderness with the children of Israel. 
I wish they could have used the verse <laughs> laying above in heavenly places, but I'll choose number two, sitting. Sitting above in heavenly places. And Diane said, seated above in heavenly places. 25 points for the Robinsons. <laughs> and now for the final question to the Huffs. Pastor Huff, your first year in marriage was? Seated above in heavenly places. Seated above in heavenly places. Thank you, husbands. The judges now are bringing me the uh, totals. And if we have a tie, we have a, we have a tie-breaking question, judges. Do we have a tie? We have a tie for second place. Well, I think we'll just uh, give them both the second place prize. All right? Our tie for second place tonight is the horns and, and the huffs with 55 points. Let's have a hand for the horns and the huffs. Second prize is, uh, <laughs> let's see, <laughs> it's a gift certificate at the, Stevens, at the Stevens School of the Bible bookstore, and you get to buy things for half price. <laughs> now we're going to we're going to give you <laughs> we're going to give you a gift certificate at the Stevens School of the Bible bookstore for 25 cents each. <laughs> Our grand prize winners tonight are Pastor and Mrs. Eleanor Horn, let's give them a wonderful hand. Oh, no, no. Oh, no. I know. I made another mistake. Actually, the grand prize winners are Pastor and Mrs. Scott Robinson. They had 65 points, grand, grand prize winners. And we want you to know, Rob, the Robinsons, that we have arranged for, a, for a, a very fine meal for two at the Gateways Inn. You're going to have hot dogs and <laughs> wieners. <laughs> That's our show for tonight. And until next time, remember, it's better to be a classic couple than a couple that's not classic. <laughs> Tonight our show has been brought to you by the Gateways Inn. And again, our couples, a first place couple will receive a dinner at Gateways Inn. Gateways Inn, the cuisine of Gerhard Schmidt and Lillian Schmidt. And also our second place winners again receive a gift certificate from the bookstore and a bottle of turtle wax to go along with their polished dancers. And we thank you for our studio audience and everyone at home participating in this show. Thank you and good night.